Hi folks, and welcome back to Kamali's Church YouTube channel. I do hope that this message uh, finds you uh, all well, but as always, we say that if you should need us for anything at all, please get in touch. Now, this week's message is based on a, a text from Isaiah uh, chapter 43, where it speaks of God doing a new thing, and I do hope that it is help and is encouraging to you all today. I wonder, do you ever uh, find yourself from time to time saying things like, oh, things were better then, things were better back then, or only if we could go back to a time when. Do you ever find yourself saying such things or even thinking such things? In a bout of melancholy, do you discover yourself longing for some time gone by when life was better, when life was simpler, when life was less complicated? I know what I do. Um, having been born and uh, spending my uh, young years until about the age of 18 uh, in Inverness and then having come back later in life uh, I, I do find myself from time to time uh, saying that thing that I used to laugh uh, uh, others for saying oh things were better in my day things were better when I was younger uh, or something similar um, in some ways they probably were uh, in other ways, they most definitely weren't. Uh, and often, uh, our, our view of things going past, especially as time goes on, tends to be uh, quite rose-tinted. I, I find, I, I identify that in myself. And uh, you do wonder at times whether our uh, view of the past uh, was uh, fully accurate. The current circumstances that we face um, may have brought many of these sort of feelings uh, to the fore and brought them to the surface or maybe heightened their effect. We've had a little time to process it. Uh, some people, maybe many people, even feel that the world has changed dramatically uh, in the last uh, few months and this has left them feeling very mournful. Longing for life as it was as short a time as, say, seven or eight months ago. Uh, sorrowful over loss and change. And yet credit is given to the author L.P. Hartley who wrote, The past is a foreign country. They do things differently there. The past is a foreign country. They do things differently there. It does make you wonder that if you could somehow invent a time-travelling machine and make your way back to some of these days that you wistfully think of from time to time, would your partial selective memories, I wonder, bear much resemblance to the reality of those times that we were nostalgic for or we are nostalgic for? Uh, even those, as I said, even those times a few short months ago. I sp suspect that in many cases, uh, the two things, our image of the past and the reality, may not match up. Uh, even the changes thrust upon us as a result of the pandemic have uh, not all been negative uh, after all. For some folk, there have been great benefits to the way the changes in the way that we have um, been living. Uh, for some there's been great realisations and great revelations uh, in their life and uh, they probably wouldn't uh, want to exchange these times for times uh, gone past. They wouldn't want to know uh, of that foreign country that is the past. So what sense can we make of all of these uh, emotions, particularly when we consider uh, how God's at work in these times, when we start to think um, of uh, the life of the church um, in the past and the life of the church in the not too distant past before lockdown and such like uh, and begin to uh, consider uh, what God may be doing in these times of ours. How can we make sense uh, of it all? Well, one passage um, which I find uh, is helpful in this regard and it might be instructive to us in this regard, and I mentioned it earlier, was that passage from 
Isaiah chapter 43. Let me read it for you. Hopefully you'll have seen the image um, displayed for a short uh, few uh, seconds uh, before. Um, but let me read that text for you. This is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake I will send to Babylon and bring down as fugitives all the Babylonians in the ships in which they took pride. I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's Creator, your King. This is what the Lord says, He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there, never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Amen. May God bless that reading from his holy word. The prophet Isaiah here looks not into the past, of course, but into an envisaged future, predicting, uh, prophesying the decline of Judah and the inevitable Babylonian captivity. In chapter 43 here, God speaks through his servant to what would be a captive people, reassuring them that although great trouble may assail them, he would be their redeemer and deliverer. God would redeem his people from Babylon just as he did with Egypt, just as he always did and just as he always will, just as Christ did once and for all on the cross. God encourages them here through Isaiah to forget the former things, to not dwell on the past. He points out to them that he is doing a new thing. He says, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. I am doing a new thing. I. Do you hear that there? I am doing a new thing. I am making. I am doing. These are the words of God. It's not as if things are happening around the world and in our lives and in our church that God is not aware of. It's not as if things are happening and God is playing catch up. I am doing, I am making, says God. He is in control. Now people may say, why is this happening? Why doesn't God fix it now? Why would he let this happen? Now these are all good questions, but perhaps they're not the right question. Because perhaps the right question is this. Am I going to trust him, despite not knowing the answer to these other questions? Do I trust that he is the same God who speaks to us in Isaiah chapter 43, who urges us not to dwell forever in the past, but to look instead for the new thing that he is doing? Be reassured. He is doing. He is making. God's people are not victims of circumstance. We are not hopeless cases. We are not hopeless cases cast adrift on the ocean of life. We are not defined by our past nor captive to the present. For our God is doing a new thing and he's constantly doing a new thing in our lives. And we must know that whatever new thing he is doing, it will surely be better than what has gone before. Because if he is working in our lives then he's working in our lives to improve, to refine us, to fit us for heaven. And therefore, if he is doing a new thing, surely it will be better than anything that's happened before. If he's doing a new thing in our lives, if he's doing a new thing in our homes, if he's doing a new thing in our communities, if he's doing a new thing in our church, then it will be better than what has already been. Because God is moving us towards a time when all will be better and all will be just as he planned. 
Now, we Christians in the UK can be tempted to imagine, because we're told so often, that the best times are behind us, that the church is dying, that the future is bleak. And maybe it seems so, and maybe people can point to statistics to, to back that up. Maybe there are harder times yet to come. But that doesn't change the fact. None of that changes the fact that God is doing a new thing. He's doing a new thing and he's doing a new thing for our benefit and he's doing a new thing that will be better than what has gone before. Remember in the account of the Exodus from Egypt we learn that the people um, having been led through the waters and their enemies having been submerged in those same waters uh, the people are, are, are seen to be gathered in the desert, grumbling and, and complaining in a short time uh, to Moses, even going so far as to express regret, apparently, of, at having uh, left captivity and left slavery in Egypt, longing for times gone by, for times past, which uh, by now had somehow uh, taken on a rose-tinted hue in their eyes, but neglecting at the same time to be thankful t for what God was doing in the moment and for what God would do in the future. Neglecting to be thankful for what God was doing in the moment, or is doing in the moment, let's bring it up to the present tense. Neglecting to be thankful too for what he will do in the future. Let us not make the same mistake. Our God is doing a new thing. We are not like the world blown here, there and everywhere without direction or guidance. Our God is doing a new thing and if a new thing he is doing in our city in our uh, lives uh, in our families and in, in our church uh, we can be absolutely sure it is a good thing and it is a better thing uh, even in the wasteland even in the dusty desert he is making a path he is bringing fresh water and even when it's hard to see that we must keep trusting we must keep looking for the paths. Keep your eyes peeled for the streams of new life, for our God is surely doing a new and a wonderful thing. Amen. Let's come before God in prayer. Sovereign God, we trust that you are doing a new thing. You're constantly doing all things motivated by goodness and love. And so even when times are hard, help us to see the new thing that you are doing and help us not to dwell on a past that was not always our friend and help us to see that the future is not entirely our enemy. You are shaping our past, present and future and you are building your church which will prevail. So even in the dry times, even in the wastelands of our lives, even when we're heartbroken, even when we're sorrowful, even when we're ill, even when we're troubled, even when we're worried, even when we're fearful. Teach us to take you at your word, Lord God, and to trust in Jesus. Remind us that for all that was good that has gone before, the best is yet to come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.